game, and it's something about sort of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of No More Future. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go! Alright. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be possible any longer. Even Bradbury seems surprised that you tried denying the truth for this long. I mean, let's be real. I did also comment on the way you ended that big speech of yours, if you haven't forgotten. If they're trying to make if they're trying to make you feel stupid right now, they're most definitely succeeding. So, you heard everything Jasper said. That I did. What of it? You tried to organize your thoughts once more, not wanting to be taken by surprise by the canine again. If you have no choice but to have this talk right now, you might as well go out swinging from the get-go. Well, for starters, you can start by explaining why you didn't tell me any of this when we first met yesterday. Hmm, well, for starters, I had no idea how much time I'd get to spend with you, so I had to choose my words carefully. Plus, like Jasper already said, I too thought you were already aware of most of this. He makes as if to continue with his spiel, but the Drake is quick to interrupt him, seemingly curious. While we're on the topic, what did you two discuss yesterday, exactly? I thought you only went to the android's apartment to ask questions regarding an incident that took that occurred the night prior. Badbury raises an eyebrow at his queries, seemingly unwilling to, re to reply truthfully. Oh, we didn't do much. We only... He wanted to know how much I knew about the synthetic project for whatever reason. Again, you stunned both your companions with the swiftness of your response. He caught wind of how little time I had to choose to become one, and wanted to know how I felt about the whole ordeal. Of course, that's only half the truth, if it could even be considered truth at all. You could go ahead and tell Jasper the full extent of Bradbury's actions yesterday and the depth of his suspic suspicions, but you don't feel comfortable doing so just yet. For one, it's Jasper you're talking about, not Mary. You have no idea how he'd react, but you're pretty sure the consequences wouldn't be good for you either way. More importantly, keeping your options open is one of the utmost is of the utmost importance. On the off chance Bradbury's right about Pandora hiding something, you don't want to make enemies of either them or the FBI until you know the full story. Well, make enemies of them more than they already are, anyway. Luckily, Jasper is completely clueless as to your deception, or so it would seem. Is that so? Then pray tell, Bradbury. Was it truly necessary to, to intrude on private property and only ask a few questions? Oh, you know me, Mr. Morgan. Knowing involves a great deal of my job, and knowing everything about your latest invention, well, even more so. Besides, I could also ask, it, ask you if it was truly necessary to bring Isaac all the way here only to spoon-feed him such trivial information on your company. The dragon appears to be quite troubled by the dog's choice of words for whatever reason, but he shows no discernible reaction other than that for the moment. While you wonder about that, the waiters finally bring in two prime cuts of steak that, for a change, look mostly edible. Nobody bothers to listen to the dish's introduction. Nobody even tries to eat it. You're not the only one fully invested in this conversation anymore. I'd hardly call anything I shared with the android trivial, Bradbury. I agree. Trivial isn't the right word for it. Frightening is way more accurate. At least frightening to you. Neither the Drake nor the dog appear concerned by your same fears at all, and instead look at you from top to bottom with what appear to be annoyance and curiosity, respectively. Like you're the weird one here, and not them. It's actually kind of insulting. Second now. Why aren't you bothered by all this? Why am I the only one wary of Pandora owning everything and everyone? Shouldn't you be the one having this kind of reaction right now, knowing all this? Once again, the canine hardly budges before the weight of your accusations. Unless you count that know-it-all smirk plastered on his face. Now, now, let's not jump to conclusions. I never said Pandora owning everything isn't a big deal. It's just nowhere near as crazy as you might make it sound is all. You make as if to harshly reply, but stop yourself at the last moment. You, you've already done it before Jasper early in the conversation, and it only served to make you look dumber in front of the CEO. It becomes amply evident by now how unpopular your opinions on the matter are. You thought of all people Bradbury would have similar feelings to you, but that doesn't appear to be the case. In truth, everything is as Jasper said. Pandora is the leading, no, the only force in the world economy at this point in time. And they have been for the longest of times as well. In fact, they've become so prominent at this point, and their influence so vast, it's simply impossible to imagine a world without them. At least I imagine it would be for most people, if only they knew all these things. And none of this concerns you? It's upsetting. You don't know why, but this conversation, all this new information, is deeply unsettling. And seeing the canine recite it all as if they were a, cool, a school essay only doubles the discomfort. Of course it concerns me. I'm FBI, remember? Everything Pandora does concerns me. You know what I'm trying to say? And so do I. I'm surprised to hear Jasper's voice add itself to the mix, seeming just as, seeming just as if not even more annoyed than yours. His hand tightens into fists beneath the table as he turns to sternly address the FBI agent. 
We've wasted enough time with frivolities by now. Get to the damn point already. Even faced with Jasper's wrath, Bradbury's voice and attitude remain as unfazed as ever. The point? Jasper's fist collided with the table in a loud, undignified fashion. Just admit it, Bradbury. You didn't come all this way to have a pleasant conversation or whatever nonsense you were peddling to us at the start. I know how much you despise Pandora, how much you wish us all gone, how much you want to see us fail. And judging by his attitude, so does the android. That you do. The St. Bernard's feeling toward the Drake and his company are a mystery to no one at this point. You hardly have time to ponder about that about that further, however, as Jasper's tone becomes even ever ang even a ever angrier and his voice ever louder. You just came here to gloat, didn't you? To try and use my discussion with the android as a tool to deviate him against his makers, isn't that right? Well, go on. Make your little speech about how we're the worst thing to ever happen to the world. It's the least you can do after wasting all my precious time. I'm listening. Silence. Once again, the room is filled with nothing but silence. Perhaps to the dragon this is a victory sign, but his accusations have found their mark, like arrows perfectly striking their target. But you know better. You've seen that look on the canine's face before more than enough already, and felt the weight of his stare more often than you would have liked. He's not affected. He's not bothered. He's only getting started. You seem to have greatly mistaken me. Just where did you get this impression of me, might I ask? You knew that something was coming, some sort of response that would have shut both you and your companion down like smartphones without battery. But you were not expecting that. But... You... Come on now, I didn't say everything is as Jasper said, for sh for, sh for show, you know? I agree with his belief that no one would bat an eye if only they knew how much they depended on Pandora for their livelihood. You only need to look at these waiters over there. They can clearly tell that we're discussing strange things over here, yet they make no effort to try and listen in. Why do you think that is, exactly? Out of all the things Bradbury could have done, agreeing with Jasper on all his points is probably at the bottom of the list. His fake friendliness from earlier has mellowed out considerably all of a sudden, and now he speaks with a calm yet serious tone that almost feels genuine. It's stunning, to say the least. That's only because those people are just trying to do their job, though, isn't it? Precisely. Much the same as everyone else is simply trying to live their life. You're immediately reminded of something the Drake said much earlier in the conversation. Who has the time or will to look any of this up? Bingo. It's quite disconcerting. You could be focusing on a number of different things right now, half of which related to the St. Bernard's sudden change of attitude. Yet all that concerns you right now are all these new bits of information, the unexpected way the dog is presenting them to you. Evidently, you are not alone in your disbelief. And you really have no qualms with everyone depending on Pandora, either. Sounds quite hard to believe, given your role is to keep us in line. More or less. I mean, you said it better best yourself, didn't you? You provide food for the hungry, medical care for the needy, and, well, a whole slew of other things. I assume I don't need to mention everything. Fact is, the good Pandora does to this world simply by existing cannot be overstated. Maybe this is what's really bothering you about the entire discussion. How quickly one revelation leads into the next, how seamlessly the logic in the canine's arguments flows, how easily you can bring yourself to believe these assertions, and most importantly, how much sense it's all starting to make the more you hear about all this. But still, doesn't it bother you the least that a single company is responsible for all this? Why should it? Is it any different from a bunch of different companies providing all the goods and services in the economy instead? In the end, most people don't mind who they give their money to, so long as they get what they're seeking in return. When all you care about is leading a quiet, fulfilling life, the name of the company you need to thank for this opportunity is wholly unimportant. Some would even argue that concentrating all the power in one, in one business's hands prevents futile power struggles between corporate overlords and increases efficiency. So long as the company doesn't get lazy, anyway. It's so quick you almost fail to notice it. The glint of Bradbury's smirk, which resurfaced for just a moment underneath his otherwise normal-looking smile. It tells you that he's hiding, still hiding something, despite how candid he appears. You still haven't answered your own question, Bradbury. Hmm? You look straight into the canine's eyes, a defiant glint in your own. You asked how that's any different from a bunch of different companies doing the same thing instead, didn't you? Off the top of my head in this scenario, one company failing wouldn't hurt the system too much. The others would be able to take over and the balance would be restored. But in our reality, if Pandora were to fall, everything and everyone who depend on them would collapse as well. How come you didn't realize this sooner? Why did putting into words that troubled you with this revelation take this long to accomplish? And why are Bayberry's lips curling once more into that malevolent, all-knowing smirk? See, this is what I was talking about yesterday. You truly are so much smarter than you give yourself credit for, Isaac. Indeed, imagine what would happen should Pandora suddenly leave the scene, shall we say. 
need a little time to articulate your thoughts on the matter, and truly understand the consequences such a catastrophe would bring. You haven't studied much economics at school, but you're thankful for what little you did. You'd be totally clueless right now otherwise. Well, with no funding and no incoming orders, most businesses would stop operating. With no goods, no services, and no jobs, the entire world economy would freeze overnight. Bradbury appears mostly satisfied with your answer. A very generic description, but mostly correct. Everyone would panic, the institutions would stop working, and the world would fall into chaos. Truly, it'd be hell on earth, like we've never seen before. His musings are suddenly interrupted by a familiar slam on the table, coming from Jasper's side of the table. He haven't looked his way at all since Bradbury began his explanation, but his anger's clearly risen in the time since. Oh, give me a break. You're talking of the apocalypse as though it's right next door. There has never been a crisis of this magnitude in history, even before Pandora took control, and especially after we did. You're just trying to scare that android to thinking things your way. I'm doing no such thing, I assure you. Isaac figured all this out on his own, with no meddling needed on my behalf. Besides, the only reason nothing of this magnitude has ever happened before is because all the necessary conditions weren't in place yet. The conditions? The dog's smile returns as he returns to face you once again. Before Pandora took over, when a business sector or a country would collapse, other companies or countries would pick up the slack. Because power was divided among many, so was the risk, and systemic problems were much easier to sort out. But now, all that power, all that risk, is focused in the hands of a select group of people. And if it fall, and it falls to them to ensure that the entire system, the entire world, keeps running as usual. The whole world goes quiet for a moment, as reality begins to settle in your mind. So that's it, huh? That's the state of the world we're living in. It's awful. There's no other way to describe it. It's less than an hour. In less than an hour, everything you thought you knew your entire life was turned on its head, and all you're left with in its passing is fear and anger. And what truly bothers you is that you're alone. That you're the only one who laments the loss of the simplicity and fairness your old reality seemed to have. For the first time in a long while, you truly feel like a fool. Hmm. Pandora, I'm aware of the responsibility I bear. Jasper makes as if to speak up once again, looking more stalwart and composed than ever, seemingly unfazed by everything the canine said. His gaze is as stern as his grandfather's as he crosses his arms, looking more and more like one of the busts you saw earlier in the meeting room at Pandora's HQ. My job is as you describe it. To keep the entire world running. To coordinate every inch of this business and steer it towards our desired outcome. To preserve this world and all the people in it. To keep things running smoothly as they always have. To keep people alive and content as they deserve to be. You don't know what to think at this point, honestly. As much as the Drake's trying to cover up for the flaws Bradbury highlighted earlier, he fails to address any of the points that make you upset. It feels like grandstanding. Pointless, un pointless, uninspiring, disingenuous grandstanding. And clearly you're not the only one to think so. Bravo, what a wonderful speech. Pray tell, was this always the case, or did your motivations change across the ages? I always wondered if the people who developed Kronos were also inspired by such selfless altruism. And here we are again, talking about the same topics as always. Disgusting. Kronos was a mistake, a foolish attempt to innovate where there was no need, to fix what was never broken. That abomination of science taught us a valuable lesson. Us and I intend to treasure for as long as I'm CEO. As long as I'm in charge of this company, the world would not fear another monster like him again. If everything the dog and dragon brought up so far felt like getting stabbed with a knife, his final argument was them twisting it in the wound. Especially that abomination of science part. A title we recall Jasper using not, they, not even that long ago. A title he used to describe you. And from there, it's not difficult to put two and two together, and realize this entire speech was, uh, speech of his was all about you. And though all you can think of right now is how much you wish you could cry, St. Bernard can do nothing but laugh. Alright, y'all, I'm actually going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank you all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Kate Silverman. Thank you going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thanks to our two gold tier members, uh, Zeke and Toby. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye